I've been accused by my wife, Nancy, of being not good at making friends. There was an incident over the weekend at a bar. We sat next to a stranger, and it was me in this order, me, Nancy, stranger. And she was talking to him, and she leaned over and said, you should exchange numbers so he can be your friend. And that was just too too awkward. But my question is, why do men have such a hard time I, I making don't friends as adults? No, I, I know it's true, and I'm envious of women who do a much better job at it. But it's just it, it's, it's just how we are. <laughs> the phone number is 240-9650. Hi, Amy. Michael, I was at the Orange Peel this past weekend with my husband, and we met a very nice man, and we talked over all the loudness. I'm telling you, it works. <laughs> and Amy, you are right. I agree with her that friends don't just happen. You have to be a friend for someone to be your friend back. It doesn't just happen. Exactly. Somebody has to make the first move. So, and and it's going to have to be your wife, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> she has done this Apparently. for you. Kelsey, are you, uh, you said you're back in town at your home. Are you near your refrigerator at all? Um, I am. Okay. She's like, that's a weird question. <laughs> can, can we play guess what's in Kelsey Ballerini's refrigerator with you? Yeah, let me walk to the kitchen. So okay, all right. Now, how long have okay. you been How long have you been back in town? Have you had a chance to go shopping or not? I've been back in town for one day. Oh, okay, all okay, right, Okay, so good. this is going to be an interesting uh, game. Uh, all right, my first it guess, really is. <laughs> my first guess okay. is uh, mustard. Um, <laughs> I have... <laughs> I have Chick-fil-A honey mustard. Okay, okay that, that counts. counts. Ding, ding, right. That counts. Okay, my my first guess is going to be some kind of rotten takeout that you had the last time you were mm. home. I got to be honest, I do. It's like it's <laughs> Chinese food from like a week and a half ago. Okay. So I was going to say, it's like a science experiment at this point, but yeah. I hate, I hate that I just had to say that on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> How's the first week of school going for you? How's that uh, drop-off and pick-up? Uh, Melanie, last year you claim you spent... Uh, four- 45 heckin' minutes. <laughs> and it frustrated me to no end. Well, we don't want you to hold on to that frustration. We want you to let it go and share your experience with us. 240-9650. Estella, what's going on? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Flat Rock Middle is congested. I have been in this line for literally since 735. It's not just the the kids and the teachers and everything else. It's the, the adults, too. Aren't you like, get on with it, kids. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. My son jumps out of the car. He's ready to go. He, If he gets picked up from school, he jumps in the car. He's ready to go. He's already prepared to look for it. But these other people are just like, uh. On your last <laughs> nerve. So uh, what, <laughs> yes. what do you need them to do? Yes. Please, uh, Estella, be specific. What do you need them to do so they can get their act together so you're not stuck in line for half an hour? Pay attention. That's it. That's the main thing. Pay attention. And it's not that hard. You drop your kid off, you go. There's no, bye, baby, see you later. No, it's get out of my ear. Go, get gone. This is my eight hours of peace. (laughs) (laughs) Keep moving. Keep moving. We'll see you, Estella. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So when we started working together, I learned that kind of trendy word. It was new to me, and it was season. Yes. And the, what season, uh, that's a tough season of life you were Probably in. I heard I was, you use it. I'm in a constant tough season <laughs> of life, it feels like, sometimes. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to share what's been going on. It's been a tough season over the last two months for me. Uh, my mom passed away, and that was very sad. It was. And we were just starting to try to get over that, and uh, some of this is just absurd. So over July 4th, my family gets together for a family reunion, and we wanted to do the first one without my mom. And while we were driving there, I'm going to look this other way so I don't get okay. too emotional. Yeah, don't look um, at me. Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing a you're sad face. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, I hate you're that you're, too, you're being I too hate empathetic. That you're in a tough season. I yeah. do. No, I appreciate that. Then we got a call that my wife's, Nancy's mom, passed away. Mm. So that's what happens over the last two months. And that's why I've been away. And it's sad and you're in a house just with these grieving people right and everybody grieves in their own way and it's some of it is ridiculous and you know for my own mom uh suddenly this keychain appeared that they got from a hotel on a trip they went to europe and nobody's seen it for 20 years or thought about it 
and now all six of us want it. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. You didn't think about that before before now. Yeah, right. And it's just silly things like that. And uh, were there, you know, so we would take turns. And you'd go, you know, number six would choose. Five. Anyway, it was. And now I just have all this stuff that I didn't want from people I wish were still here. And I get that. Yeah. And it, 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 seasons are like that. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping for a better season for you soon. Thank you. It it's can't, been a can't season. get much worse. <laughs> you call this, this is a season of loss. You're in a season of loss because there's been multiple losses in such a short period of time. And it's hard to catch your breath in a season like this. It just is. Yeah, I think that's true. It's a hard season. And I appreciate you sharing your difficult season with us. I know that that will inspire somebody else who's going through a hard season themselves. So take encouragement. It's a bad season, not a bad life. Have you ever had a, a silent standoff with your neighbors? I'm having one at my uh, apartment building. Uh, there has been an empty ice cream sundae cup sitting on uh, in the hall for, this is day 11 now. And I'm not, I'm not making this up. It has been sitting there that long. There's a picture of it on our Facebook page. And uh, we're all refusing to clean it up. I, think the, I don't understand why nobody's picking it up. Well, you know what? I wanted to get to the bottom of that. I'm glad you asked. And the mixed microphone was there. I ran into my neighbor yesterday. And I wanted to see how she was feeling about the ice cream sundae cup that none of us are picking up. <laughs> okay, so here we are. And I'm sure you probably know what I want to talk to you about. Okay, hi. Hi, have you noticed it? I have, I notice it every day. I walk past it every day. And I, I feel like I should pick it up, but then I'm worried. I was like, I should get gloves. Is that weird that I think that? I am of the, of mine, same mind as you, is that I walk by it six or eight times a day. Yeah. And I haven't picked it up because I don't want to touch it. Right. So now it's like a silent standoff amongst all four of us because I don't think it's hers. I'm not blaming well, her. Not, no, it obviously wouldn't. I don't, if it was, she would have picked it exactly. up. Exactly. And then I don't even know who lives there. So, right. <laughs> I so, know. So should I just get it? Because I thought to myself, even yesterday, I thought I'm going to get a paper towel and just <laughs> pick, <laughs> and pick it up. Okay. And then wash my hands thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met someone by chance? And you think, wow, what an interesting person and a good storyteller. I'd like to talk more to that person. Well, that's what happened when I walked into David Ledford's Farm Fresh Produce there in Swannanoa. I was just trying to buy some tomatoes. I met David. He knew everybody's name who came in. Everybody's telling great stories. And I said, hey, can we call you on the show every once in a while? He said, sure. It's become our fun Friday tradition. And he joins us now. David, Melanie is making me wear pink and go to the Barbie movie today. Do what now? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> the Barbie movie. Every it's a, it's a movie of the summer, and she's dressed me up yeah. in pink. I'm Ken. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Would you like to go with us, David Ledford? How many times do you use a bath towel before you change it out? That is the uh, topic. There was an article about how we're all doing too much laundry. And so I guess maybe this is me doing my part for our, <laughs> our earth. If that's what you want to call it, Michael. Or I'm a gross boy. But I I have a weekly towel. And, and I just think that's so weird. But what do you think? Two four zero nine six five zero. Hey, Jason, we're talking towels. Once a week. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's the same. It must be a guy thing. Once a week. Yeah. I can tell you when I came back from uh, when I was in the service, came back from Mogadishu, Somalia. I used uh, three washcloths and three towels one time and threw them all away. Oh wow! Oh, wow! <laughs> well, thank you for your service. We were just so covered in, in filthiness and dirt that I I used uh, yeah three different washcloths and towels and and threw them away when I was done. It was just a disgusting environment. Yeah. Uh, but typically, yeah, normal everyday living, one a week. It gets changed every week. Yeah, and if you if you lay it out properly to dry, it's it's fine. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It dries fine. Yeah. I'm going to take yeah. your word for it, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Think of it as building your immune system. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tip. We'll see you, Jason. <laughs>